Yeah, opening a small business, perfect way to retire earlier. Said nobody exactly. ever. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. What were we like thinking? It. Welcome to the Exploring Washington State podcast. Here's your host, Scott Cowan. My guest today is Brian Reynolds with Anthem Coffee, and Brian's going to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about Anthem Coffee. I don't know. We're just putting him on the spot. So, Brian, welcome <laughs> to the show, and why don't you seriously give us a little bit of the, the – what was the reason that you guys started Anthem, and we'll go from there. That's awesome. Scott, I'm stoked to hang with you, man, and uh, to share the story a little bit. And it really just kind of goes back to, man, I'm trying to think. This was a this was an idea that my wife threw out over 15 years ago, um, the idea to start a coffee shop. And, okay. you know, our family was never risk takers. We never um, really branched out and, and did anything, you know, that wasn't safe, so to speak. And until my parents um, one day decided to answer the call to adoption, you know, this, this is kind of a, it's, it's totally a family affair, the way Anthem began and the way Anthem has gone. Um, and, and the way that adoption slides into this was my parents had heard a story of a little five-year-old girl who by the age of five had been through about uh, 12 different foster homes, you know, and their hearts were just moved toward uh, compassion. They were about to be empty nesters. They had the margin and the resources to, to do something about, um, about, you know, that little girl's life and circumstances. So they invited her into her, their home and ended up giving, uh, her a, a last name and a forever home. You know, they fostered her, they adopted her. They went on to foster eight kids and adopt four of them. So I have three other sisters and a brother I've always wanted. And, um, it's just, uh, it was in that endeavor of, of, you know, loving and serving people, um, creating a chance for them to be, uh, to have life change take place um, that, you know, we, we thought, well, man, how can we get my dad to be retired sooner and, and more involved and invested in these kids' lives? And that's when my wife said, well, let's start a business together. Let's, let's open up a coffee shop. And 15 years ago, there was a local franchise called Forza Coffee Company that was coming up on the scene. And, right. you know, we, we saw an article about it. We ended up uh, connecting with the owner about it. And it, it seemed uh, like just a great fit for us to, to try our hand at business. So we did, <laughs> you know, my parents leveraged their house. We bought into the franchise. Again, we, we didn't have a windfall of money or anything like that. We risked it all. And um, my parents entrusted me to run it, to drive it, to learn business and uh, elbow to elbow, <laughs> kneecap on the floor, you know, installing tile, building this thing out. It's, it's like I said, it's been a family affair. And uh, you fast forward uh, at the end of the five, first five years as a franchise, uh, our franchise wanted to double our franchise fees. And that's when all the creativity and the dreaming about what does our future look like as a family and a family business began. And that's in a sense where Anthem Coffee was born. You know, we, we came alive on November 1st of 2011 and we launched in two locations, one in downtown Tacoma. And then we converted our, our flagship store in Puyallup uh, to an Anthem on the same day completely understaffed, completely under-resourced, completely underfinanced, And, uh, you know, we just, it was, um, we learned a ton. It was the school of hard knocks for us, man. <laughs> I got to, you said something though that I just can't let go and that you're, you wanted to make it so your dad could retire earlier so that he could be present with the, the, the foster kids and yeah, opening a small business, perfect way to retire earlier. Said nobody exactly. ever. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. What were we like, thinking? Dad, can what you go from thinking? your 40 hour a week job to maybe let's invest everything and can you work 80 hours? I, I know it worked and out. Take and a I, paycheck I, I at you, all. But, yeah, but, no, but, you're, you know, you're not like, wrong, Scott. You're not wrong. That was that was that was a really bold leap by by all of you. And so kudos to that. And I think it's how do I want to say this? I, I, I just think it's, um, well, it's, I find it interesting because you said you guys aren't risk takers and yet something moved you enough to take a, a, 
a large risk, not just a, you know, because you were involved in, you had to have a space, you signed up for a franchise, you had to have employees. This wasn't just some side hustle that you were doing, doing after work. This was a full fledged, full blown business with we all, all the, in. Yeah. With it all of the work. inherent, in all of the inherent easiness of a full, I'm kidding. You know, I mean, you know, I, I bet you can probably remember the first day that um, an employee called in sick and you had to scramble because you, you know, you know, what I mean, those, those challenges, those. And when you run a coffee shop, what time did you guys start opening when you first started? Oh, these were, yeah. these were 6 a.m. to, to right. 9 p.m. days. Right. You know, and so day, somebody calls in day. sick for opening and you're, you're, you're falling out of bed, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. and you're like rubbing the sleep out of your eyes and trying to go and, and, and do this. And yeah, anyway, but it's. I don't want to say it's worked out because every day has got myriad of, you know, opportunities and challenges for you still, I know. And, uh, but I think it's great. So what, when you, uh, let's go back to before you, before you, the first five years when, when it was the franchise. Yeah. That was your original location there in Puyallup then right by the, um, um, Pioneer gosh, Park, the, the post office. Post yeah, office Park, yep. right, right. Okay. Why did you guys pick that location? Oh, I love this question, Scott. Man, I got to tell you, you know, our franchise said uh, we have three locations for you to consider as you get ready to open this uh, this location. Um, mm -hmm. One was in Lakeland Hills inside of a grocery store. Mm -hmm. The other one was on South Hill in Puyallup in front of Best Buy and on, you know, Meridian, which is like one of the craziest streets up in that area. <laughs> and then the other one was in downtown Puyallup, which at the time, 15 years ago, was nothing but antique stores. And it was kind of a depressed economy down there and not much happening, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, no, I know. Um, and what's odd is it was rated as a C location. The other two that I just mentioned were A locations, supposedly. Um, so as we, we went and looked at each of them, the last one we looked at was this downtown Puyallup location. And there was just something about it. You know, it's first of all, the, the, the condos, uh, there's about 36 condos that sit above the location and that was being built and finished at the time. And you know, I, I think I just saw, I saw the vision of what Puyallup could be, especially if there was, you know, what we've been become known for as the living room of whatever community we're inside of. Um, and as I was standing there literally in the middle of the street, because there was no traffic coming by, and I'm looking at this building, there was just a major, there was a major piece about that spot, you know, even though it was a rated C, even though other people said, man, that, that location is not going to work. And in fact, my father-in-law uh, was on the police force there in downtown Puyallup. He happened to drive by in this, this surreal moment and, and goes, Brian, what are you doing standing <laughs> in the middle of the street? And I go, well, John, I'm looking at this, uh, this location with my family here. We're looking at doing a coffee shop here. What do you, what do you think about that? You think it'd be a good idea? <laughs> here was the vote. Here's the vote of confidence I got. He goes, well, it's not my money. You do whatever you want to do, <laughs> you know? So he was always kind of a, a, just a, you know, not, not the most encouraging guy, but uh, he would tell you like it is. And so, and then he okay. just drove off and we were left, uh, we were left to make a decision. And it was just for us as a family, we felt like this is where we want to plug in. This is the community of people we want to serve and we're excited to be here, man. So let's go for it. And, and we did, and, you know, fast forward. What's funny is other coffee shops came and went to those a locations, one of them being Starbucks only to end up closing a few years later in some mm -hmm. of the spots that we considered going. So, yeah. Well, I think, did you guys back then, did you have the vision that you were going to be the living room of the community? Was that part of the original vision or did that come over time? That that came through a newspaper article. Somebody happened to just write that that language into mm -hmm. a story about us. And it just absolutely, you know, resonated. To be honest with you, I mean, our, our mission from the onset was just to simply love and serve people. You know, that, that was it seems too simple. But if you really lean into what that is and how how to do it and, and, and how it springs from the heart of my parents bringing in foster kids and, and then loving them and serving them and giving them a last name and a forever home. Um, you know, I had a mentor that, that coined this phrase that we have adopted as our mission 
at Anthem, which is heroic hospitality. And heroic hospitality is the kind of hospitality that just goes beyond, you know, opening a door for someone or, or taking their jacket as they come in. You know, this is really where we try to train every one of our people to see the needs and meet the needs before there's even an ask, you know, to, um, to just create uh, a unique experience for, for people that, that could cause them to want to come back again and again, something that maybe evokes a feeling or emotion where they, they sense this, you know, the fact that we actually, actually really care about who they are and that we care about the fact that they park their car across the street, narrowly avoiding possibly being hit by traffic to come into our spaces to spend time here. Like the least. No, wait, can I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> you. You just said you were standing in the street because there was no traffic. So it could, could not have been risk. No, I'm kidding. Cause it's gotten. It finally that, changed. It, yeah. It finally, I can totally give you a hard time, but it, totally, it has finally changed. That's well, right. But here's, here's my observation about of those three locations that you've talked about. And I'm not privy to uh, Lakeland Hills, but you said grocery store. I am privy to where Best Buy is located on Meridian. I know me personally, I'm not going to go hang out in those two locations. I'm not going to hang out in a grocery store and have a cup of coffee. I'm not going to hang out in a grocery store and have a conversation with somebody. I avoid Meridian if at all possible in my life. And so the idea of wanting to go and hang out there, no. But that location that you had, I've, I've met, I've been there many times um, with RC and that we talked about before we hit recording and, and with other people, cause we had a real estate office a few blocks away um, back then. And uh, we would go, sometimes we'd sit inside. Sometimes we'd go to the park and we, but you know, we, there was this, or there still is, I don't want to say was, but past tense for me. Cause I live in, you know, Wenatchee now, but there was this, um, Community feeling where, where a grocery store is, a grocery store for me is, is, is lacking that. So I kudos in, in, in hindsight to you guys to pick the quote unquote C location, which I can only imagine that this, it was graded C because it didn't have the car traffic that Meridian Precisely. or the grocery yeah. store. Yeah. I would say so. And, and it was just not as developed as and robust as it is now. It's like, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, they build a community stage for events. They build a spray park right in front of our front door. You know, you've got the train station, the fire department, you've got other small, you got the police station down the road. I mean, you know, we can pick on cops and say they're going to drink coffee. I mean, you know, the the whole (laughs) but yeah, you have the post office. Yeah, no, exactly. So, so that was a great, a great vision. And, you know, we can pat you on the back for looking, looking backwards. We can pat you on the back because it's a good, good choice. It was luck. Yeah. I mean, in a lot of ways, yeah. again, like I said, it was the piece as we looked at it and we thought, let's just, at, at some point you have to just decide too and go, let's go for it. And let's go all in. No looking right. back. We're going to make this whatever. You know, I remember mm-hmm. before we even opened, um, taking a coffee cart out and walking around the park and going to different businesses to introduce myself and our business and to sample it to people and to to chat with them. So, you know, there was a lot of things that went into the success of the launch of that location. Mm -hmm. And for the five years that we were part of the franchise, we were the number one store. Um, We were the 10th store to come alive. The franchise grew to 26 or seven stores. And then I'm not even sure if there's any that remain today, but, uh, you know, here we are. So question, you guys are current. Well, you use Delano's coffee. Yes. Yeah. We've partnered with them since day one, for sure. So a lot of coffee shops these days, there's a, um, a lot of coffee roasters. You know that there's a lot, you know, <laughs> lots of cloth and a lot of places are doing both. They're roasting their own coffee and then they're selling their own coffee. What was the inspiration for you to partner with, with Delano's and not necessarily come up with your own coffees? You know, we, from the get go, the way that we were served by Delano's coffee roasters, their team, um, it, you know, it's the same values, the same heart, and the same support that we try to provide our customers. And so it's been just this perfect cohesive fit where we've been on the receiving end of, you know, what I'd call heroic hospitality from Delano's towards us as a business. Okay. And, you know, and, and just having a business building partner in them, somebody that 
can come alongside in the earlier days and help train or help be a second set of eyes when as a business owner, you're, you're so close to your project and it's your baby. You, you sometimes mm-hmm. don't see the, the glaring things that need to be fixed right in front of you. And so to have their support in, in, in adjusting things along the way, especially as from day one, we were on this, you know, up and to the right trajectory of growth year over year, right. over year, over year, over year. Um, when we used the coffee from the franchise, it was more of an Italian and dark roast, similar to what mm-hmm. you would find at Starbucks. But when we switched and became Anthem, you know, I, we spent a lot of time together tasting a, a bunch of their different blends and tweaking it together and working on one that still gets me up out of bed faster than anything for our Live Loud blend. And so that's, it's a signature blend that we've had for 10 years with them. And uh, I, I still love it. So I have a few, a few a day. So yeah. Few a day. Okay. So they, <laughs> so you guys partnered and collaborated then on the actual roast. You're not just serving. And I don't know Delano's name. So Delano XYZ, you're, you're serving a, a, a coffee that you collaborated with them and they're the and producer of it for you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and a lot of largely in part because we wanted to focus on what we're most passionate about, which is the retail experience. Right. I didn't, I didn't have a passion necessarily to go learn the art of roasting. And if somebody, you know, being Delano's was already had nailed the science of repeating the processes mm-hmm. of great coffee. I mean, I'm not, why waste the time? And again, it wasn't something that I'm driven by. For me, it's okay. the heroic hospitality. It's the retail and the interactions sure. with customers and building cool. community. Once again, kudos for you understanding where you are and where, where the, the, where your family is as, you know, nobody stepped up and said, we should roast coffee. So right. <laughs> you know, I, I watched a, I watched this video you guys put out and you, you know, it shows your dad, you guys are where you're repurposing a lot of things. And I'd, I'd like to talk about that, but you, there's this picture of your dad, you know, working on a table and drilling some metal to put the band around the edge of the table. And, you know, I could certainly see your dad being the guy who got, pushed into, Hey, you like to be with your hands. You roast coffee. And he's like, okay. And going, I don't want to, and it would never, it would never be this, this, it would always be the, you know, the, just, it'd be a task you have to do, but yeah, you're not, you're not passionate. So I like the fact that you guys identify that and that you've, you've partnered with a company that meets your, your company's values. So that's kudos to you. And yeah, Scott, I would say too. Oh, forgive me, man. I was oh, going to say, I, what's what's helped our family business work really well too, because it is, it's my mom, my dad, it's my wife and I, but we've, you know, and we've had some crunchy conversations along the way over 15 years, but what's really helped us to continue to thrive in business relationship together is just understanding what lane we should be in each one of us and what our strengths mm-hmm. are and what our weaknesses are. And it's anytime we cross over into each other's lanes is when it gets messy but as long as we trust and, and have great communication and, and stay in the right lines, right. you know, it's worked really well. So, well, let's, okay. And, that, and kudos to that. Cause like you mentioned, your mom does the bookkeeping and all that. And and maybe, maybe you're the front of the house guy and you need to be front of the house. And the minute you have to go and, and look at the checkbook, your eyes cross over and you transpose numbers. <laughs> and the next thing you know, it's bad. Good. Good to figure that out. Cause that's you know, self-acknowledgement on my part. Um, yep. <laughs> So, but you guys did, so what was the, what was the inspiration to do the reclaimed items? Cause I think you started doing that almost before it became really trendy. And now, and now you go into places and it's, yeah, you know, but, I hear you. I hear you. It's, and it's a different level of trying to repurpose or trying to have this certain look, you know, I think we caught the wave like right at the crest, um, this was, you know, like I mentioned, we became Anthem uh, November 1st of 2011. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not sure when, you know, uh, Chip and Joe Gaines were doing the reclaim stuff or whatever. I, but, <laughs> you know, where we where one of the major inspirations for what Anthem looks like took place um, in Tacoma at our Tacoma location, Pac Ave, um, right in front of the UW Tacoma campus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you you just see all these old buildings, all this old brick, you see all like reclaimed lumber. And it was just so inspiring to, to walk that street 
Pacific Avenue in downtown, in the heart of downtown Tacoma, especially with all the revitalization that they did to prepare the mm-hmm. UW campus there. And, you know, I, I even think there's rail, there's railroad carts and there's, there's different metals and things like that. Um, that became the, the place where we began to dream about what Anthem would look like because we, we hadn't actually launched one yet. We were still operating at the Puyallup spot as the franchise mm-hmm. uh, and we were building over the course of 30 days prior to the launch um, at our Tacoma spot. We've discovered a couple places right. like um, Earthwise and Second Use and a, a few other repurposed stores that capture, you know, old building materials and, and display them. And, and what we would do is just go walk through those yards and look for pieces and, and wood and colors and, and metals with patina and different things that would kind of capture our attention. You know, mm-hmm. at our one piece in particular was a rusted metal gate, which now sits above uh, our espresso machine and bar area um, at our Tacoma spot. I mean, old gutters that we use to kind of uh, wrap around the U-shaped espresso bar that we have there. Um, old beams that we we kind of created height for the space at that location because otherwise it just felt like you'd get swallowed up in the location. So all the, uh, what do you call that? Corrugated metals and different things. They just had this feeling. Um, and you know, what, what's funny is as they get worn even more, it like, it just, it doesn't deteriorate that material. Mm-hmm. It actually just adds more value or uniqueness to it. And, and there was just something, um, something imaginative, I guess, about finding these pieces and just going, how do we incorporate them into the design, the aesthetic, the feel, you know, we're really big on, on trying to create a unique experience for people. And that involves sight, sound, smell, touch, taste. And we wanted people's senses to be in, you know, completely wrapped up and immersed in, in the moments that they have at Anthem, you know, from the smell of the coffee, but even to the textures of the materials that are around. I mean, every time you're in a shop, you'll see people reaching out and touching a beam or they're, you know, kind of like examining this or they'll <laughs> oftentimes go, man, who designed this place? And, you know, it's been, it's been piece milled together by our family. Like, you know, we didn't set out and draw these things. We just kind of built them like Legos, just piece okay. by piece. And it's been fun, man. You know, that's cool. That's a, that's a cool story. And let me, let me ask this question because in the video that I watched and in something you had said, your and your, your mom and dad said this. So I'm, I'm curious, I'd like to go back and let's talk about your mom and dad for a second. And I may not say it exactly correct, but you're, I, I think, okay. Your, your dad said that he and your mom work well on projects together. How do you think that translated into, I mean, you just said piecemealing things together. So, I mean, to me, this is a project. We're building out the Tacoma store. It's a project. What, how did they, how would you describe how they work well together on you know, projects? That was a, I thought that was a very interesting statement to hear from a, 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 a couple who have been together. I don't know how many years your parents have been married, but it was an, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting statement. You know, they, gosh, their, their relationship, their friendship, their partnership through all these years has, uh, it's been anchored in just every project, you know, from, um, from, from additions onto their home to remodeling to, you know, my mom having a vision like in in the kitchen, I want to do this, Larry, can you do it? Um, you know, and that would fuel my dad's desire to work with his hands and afford him the opportunity to buy some new tools, <laughs> you know, to, <laughs> okay. to, to finish right. whatever project. So, so, you know, now his garage, I was just over there uh, yesterday and it, you know, you can hardly walk around you, all these tools and pieces and stuff, but over the years he's built so much and he's learned, you know, the, the art of woodworking. And um, I, I mentioned in the video, something about, you know, how he's like MacGyver and Jack Bauer combined right. and, and that this guy can, he can, he just sees a problem and then figures out this crazy solution of how he can hook a hose together with this thing. And all of a sudden you have this pump that pumps water, you know? Uh, But I think just, you know, as they, their dynamic, they've listened well to one another. They've, 
met each other's needs, uh, felt needs, and then also just their their wants and hopes for the future kind of stuff. And it's um, yeah, I'm thankful to have had a front row seat to their relationship. Um, you know, I married my junior high sweetheart. Uh, I was 14. <laughs> she was 13 when I met her and we were just best friends and grew up together. We now have three boys, you know, 15, 11 and nine. And, um, you know, my, in a lot of ways, my parents are really just the unsung heroes. They don't, they're not in the forefront of everything that's happening. Um, uh, but they, they work harder than anyone in the organization to make sure that our people are well taken care of, um, paid every week and on time and equipped to, to do the things that they, you know, get to do through this job, being a barista. That's, so that's awesome. Yeah. When I listened to the video, I was, you know, active, we've all heard the term active listening. I thought you said MacGyver and Chuck Norris. I don't know why I thought Chuck, and I just had this vision of your dad, like <laughs> he's going to beat people up. I, that's just, <laughs> I'm just being honest. That's what I heard. And it was like, that's awesome. Oh. That and now awesome. you come back and go, Oh, Jack, Jack Bauer. Uh, I guess, I you know, from the hit my... show 24. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Where ah, I like guess I better clean my ears out. Cause you know, you, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. So let's, let's, let's just jump really fast forward. You have eight locations right now. Correct. Currently, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you've I'll gone from one sound. Yeah. You've gone from one. And then when you switch to Anthem, you simultaneously, rebranded and launched two that's an impressive feat and now you've added six more yes what was the motivation or what is the motivation for you guys as a, as a company to have these other locations and part two of that question is what's the vision moving forward for anthem beyond you know beyond today is there what's is there a World domination planned. Uh, you know what's the what's the kind yeah, of story? I, know. I I love it. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about the vision for the future, and especially now that we're kind of finally recovering from uh, the past year and a half or so. Um, man, I would say the 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 impetus for the growth phase that we went through uh, prior to COVID was uh, impact and influence. You know, I would say okay. it boils down to those two things, and. What we, what we noticed was as, you know, we had two stores running really well and great leaders and great people, people that we had risen up and built up and invested in and, and grown. Um, and we started to see some of these awesome players uh, begin to go to other career paths or new opportunities or whatever. There was just, there was a ceiling, quite frankly, Scott, mm -hmm. you know, there was nowhere for these these people to, to grow into. So okay. as we're building, growing people um, and they were going off, you know, uh, an opportunity, the first opportunity came around where a, a business owner in the old town area in Tacoma had called up and, and said, look, you know, we're looking to, to kind of readjust our lifestyle. We want to spend more time at home as a family. And we'd like to offer you the opportunity to purchase our location and business and, and put your brand in there. And so we explored that and it just, Again, it, it was one of these things where this is the right move. And that uh, was the catalyst that got us to, to excite our people and go, hey, we have a spot for you now. Who, you know, who, who's interested in leadership? Who wants to help launch these locations? And what's crazy is like that, that one just kind of set the stage for the next five. It was wow. six stores that we launched over the course of about two and a half years. So about every three to four months, there was a new store about to come online. But, you know, like I said, we were surrounded by great people uh, and great leaders, people who wanted to learn quickly and be involved and invested in where we were going. Um, and, and it felt, I mean, what a fun, fun season. Uh, but to see the growth in the people, too, was, I think, the biggest thing for me. It was just awesome to, to work as a team, to launch these stores and to, uh, to see impact and influence of what we felt. As a brand, Anthem Coffee, I mean, just to, to bring heroic hospitality to each community and to love and serve people well and to create a gathering space for people, you know, uh, it was received at every single location we opened up in very well. So I think that's really interesting that you say that you're. Um, you were investing in people and in, in the opportunities might not have been there for them, and so if they were motivated and want growth oriented, they would go to another challenge. and. Unfortunately for you, that was at another company. 
Good for them. Unfortunate for you. So you found a way of keeping talent by, by growing to, to grow it. the talent. That's, that's awesome. And I think as that's a business very- principle, you know, you, you have to staff for growth. And, and I think that's where we're, what we're seeing right now, you know, uh, at, at that time we were staffing, we're building people and that would lead to, um, that ultimately leads to growth. It just does. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whereas in the last 18 months, we've kind of, we've kind of just had to focus on almost surviving as so many other businesses have as well. And you're not really growth minded. You're just kind of survival minded, <laughs> you know? So, and then here we are on the other side of it. It feels like in a lot of ways where, okay, it's time to staff again. And we're staffing up. We're hiring like crazy. If you're listening to this podcast and, and I don't care where you are in the state, we're hiring, <laughs> come, okay. come see us. But, um, you know, we'll put because, a link in the, in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we're, we're doing that because we are growing again. We are planning to grow. We, we hope to add another seven, eight stores, um, oh. uh, double-sided drive-throughs are part of our vision. We'd like to have, you know, some places where that can supplement the cafes, the brick and mortars that we have. And, um, you know, and, and we've, we have one drive through of our eight locations. One of them, uh, an 1800 square foot cafe with a single sided drive through. Uh, mm-hmm. and we've, I feel like mastered the art of heroic hospitality through that venue. And we just want to do that in more places as well too. So you know, we get a you and ask yes, you to, why do you explain to me what that means that you've mastered the art of his, his story, you know, through the drive through, what, what is it that you guys are doing through the drive through that you, that's a, that's a really powerful statement. So what, let's talk drive through because let's yeah. be honest, you, you drive through, Hey, I'd like a blah, blah, blah. Thanks here. Hand through the window, debit card. Boom. Thanks. You know, you're lucky to get a thank you, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Scott, I, I would say not you from know, you guys, I, but preface nobody. I'm not, that wasn't exactly. what I was trying to say about you guys. Okay, cool. No, sorry. Sure. But, <laughs> like you go, yeah, you go through taco time and, and you kind of, you, you roll up to the microphone and you wait for somebody to go, hi, how can I help you? You know, and it's just, and you stay your thing and it's very robotic and mechanical, you know, um, we looked at our mission statement and, and what we try and do is we try to filter all of our behaviors, all of our intention. Uh, we filter it through our mission statement, you know, so we create, if, if this is our statement here, we create unique experiences that change lives and bring people back. We do this by loving and serving people, by preparing top notch handcrafted food and beverages, and by creating an environment where real relationships are fostered. So as we have every one of our team members memorize that, we believe that beliefs drive behaviors and we, we asked them, we said, how can we create a drive through experience that isn't robotic, isn't reactive and is very proactive in how we interact. Okay. So some of the thoughts that they had as a team, they said, well, you know, what if we, because one of our values is that we know and are known by our community. They said, well, what if we introduced ourselves first, our name and asked for their name so that we started out with that immediate connection of, you know, I'm not just somebody on the other end of this microphone taking an order, but I'm, I care about who you are, what your name is, and here's my name. And now we're, we're starting off with relationship, right? So it's as simple as that. Hi hey. there. Hey, Brian here. Um, what's your name? Oh, I'm Scott. Scott, what's happening this morning? How are you doing? It's, it's just a different level of connection mm-hmm. right from the get go. And it almost breaks down walls um, for the, cons- the consumer to be able to, to ask questions and, and, connect on a different level too, saying, you know, um, Brittany, what's your favorite drink? You know, I, I want to try something new today. So the reason I make that bold of a statement is because almost every day I'm getting either text messages, emails, reviews from online, um, sent <laughs> to my, you know, device saying the experience I had at Sunrise Village through your drive through was unlike anything I've had anywhere else, you know, from the moment they took my order to the moment they delivered it. It's uh, it's just a different level. And I think because our, our people get it, you know, as we talk about this Anthem experience, as we talk about what it, it looks like to deliver heroic hospitality, it's something mm-hmm. that remains at the forefront of everything we do and any opportunity we have to try to go above and beyond. We do it. Um, Yeah. That's awesome. I have not gone through your drive through. Um, but if somebody were to reach out and say, hi, I'm Brian. And who am I talking to today? Oh, this is, I'd be like, what? <laughs> I know. It, and which, I think it's great though, because the drive through experience, not just at coffee shops, but any, any fast food place 
I can only think of maybe one one place that I'm even willing to kind of say does a good job. And the fact that in that that place asks your name, but they don't tell you who they are. So it's still you now know me, but I still don't know you, the voice of the microphone. So that's I like so, what you're doing there. That's that's very cool. And that's where it's like, you know, the name is just a, is checking a box sometimes just to put the name on the cup so that we get the right order. But sure. what we're really trying to do is build relationships, man. Our philosophy is that we believe people buy from people. And right. instead of having a transactional interaction, we want a relational interaction. And that's sure. that's what we're gunning for. So. Well, and then if I come back through your drive through and let's just say you're the you're there and running the drive through and, you know, I come through every morning on my way to work and you're like, hey, this is Brian. Hey, Brian Scott. It's like, hey, you know, how's your how's everything going today? You know, had you um, mentioned to me when we'll come back to this, but had you mentioned to me in this scenario that, hey, I'm going golfing after work today, I might go, well, hey, how'd golf go? And you're like, oh, it, you know, I, I shot an 89. That's my best score ever. Well, that's cool, man. So I'm there's there's deeper connection yes i love that you get it yes sir <laughs> yeah i i love it and i think um i wish more places personally i wish more places could do that so let's so you want to grow you still want to grow are you going to stay in, in um puget sound or do you have do you have aspirations to um yeah what's how, territorially I just want to try to say that word again. Um, <laughs> where, where, what areas do you guys want to grow in? It. You know, I, I feel like we wanted to just uh, first focus on Pierce County and just dominate mm-hmm. kind of the South Puget Sound area. I feel like there's a lot of areas still, you know, from Gig Harbor all the way to Bonnie Lake, um, mm-hmm. even pushing up against Auburn area, um, mm-hmm. Lakewood. Man, there's still untapped potential in Tacoma, I believe. And sure. it's just crazy that we have so many locations there. I, I feel like my hope is over the next uh, five to seven years that we can grow to about 15 stores. Um, part of what we've done too, Scott, is we we had opened up prior to COVID um, a coffee school called the Anthem Coffee School. And people from all over the nation would fly over, spend a three-day period with me and my executive team, and we would teach them all the the fundamental principles that we've deployed uh, for creating a successful coffee business and oh. uh, almost in a consulting fashion, almost, you know, just taking them through the playbook. And mm-hmm. I'd like to see that re reopen in some fashion or, or just continue to do consulting with coffee business owners and, and uh, hopefuls in the future. Um, I, I just, I, we've gotten so much joy out of getting to do what we get to do through running this coffee business. We're so thankful to get to do it. Um, And we would love to help others uh, dreams come true in the same way. So that's awesome. Yeah. But life's not all about coffee. No, as I meant, as I mentioned in you, you know, we talk. Yeah. (laughs) It fuels the journey. It fuels the journey. It fuels the journey. But when I'll ask you specifically, and you can feel free to answer for your family too, but when you guys aren't, growing anthem when you're not serving people heroic hospitality what do you do for fun and excitement man we we hang we we just uh you know every year we have an annual family vacation and almost like a family reunion at cannon beach so we'll we'll go spend an entire week there let our hair down so to speak just have some fun together um you know personally so with my wife and my three boys we we live in a community um where there's about 10 miles of hiking and biking trails. Um, There's about 15 different parks from skate parks to uh, just huge fields and and just stuff to explore. And so, you know, from biking and uh, taking walks together, we have two dogs now. Uh, Those were COVID dogs. (laughs) They, they, (laughs) man, they were, it saved my life in a lot of ways, just getting to spend time and go on walks and and reflect on things. But uh, you know, I love to recreate, love to explore, love to, uh, we love to travel. And in fact, we're going to uh, Leavenworth um, in July. Then we go to Cannon <laughs> Beach in August. Um, then in September, we're going, my wife and I, just the two of us are going to celebrate our birthdays um, back in Leavenworth again. So we, we just got back from the desert as well, took a little trip out there. So 
uh, went to, to Phoenix and fell in love with that desert climate. And it, and I guess that oh, this really? weekend it's going to be hotter than Hades here in the North. I was going to say, snow. you just brought it up to us, man. <laughs> I know. Like, oh, it's wild. My son sent me, my son sent me this link and he says, here, check this out. And it was like, heat dome over California, Washington, and Oregon it, it, up upwards of 120. Oh, and, and I'm like, um, no, no, thank you. <laughs> and then I look at my phone and, and in fact, I'm going to look at my phone right now in real time, just so I can give you accurate what my phone tells me. Cause you know, we all do this with our phones. Like what's the weather going to be like? Yeah. So right off the bat, excessive heat watch. <laughs> so Friday 100, Saturday 106, Sunday 108, Monday 111, Tuesday 113. Unreal. I, I mean, every number on my phone is 100. Triple digits. The, triple digits for from Friday to uh, through a week through Saturday. The coolest temperature that I'm expected to have is 72 degrees. <sighs> and that's in the evening or early morning? Yeah. 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 And so, so not that this is related to our episode at all, but yesterday I, I ran down to Yakima cause we, we just, um, we designed some water bottles that we're going to sell. And so I went to pick up the water bottles and my wife went to Costco and was doing some errands and she calls me and says, Hey, should we buy an air conditioning unit for your office? I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. Let's yeah. I think that's a, that's a great idea. She goes, well, I'll go look. I said, okay, cool. Get a phone call. They don't have any at Costco. Okay. Next call I get. They have one at Fred Meyer, but it's $500. I don't want to spend that much. Okay. She goes, but I heard that they have them at Office Depot. Or not Office Depot, Home Depot. Okay. <laughs> Next phone call wasn't so kind. Blah, 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 blah. They lied to me. They don't have any. Okay. <laughs> so she ends up back at Fred Meyer buying a $500 portable air conditioner for my office. But what was, it was funny the last about one left, huh? it, was the, oh, it was the last one. But at Lowe's and Home Depot, where she went, they were all pre-sold with 206 area code numbers. So people were coming over. They couldn't find them in Seattle. So they were driving here to buy air conditioner. That's how scared I think we all are right now of what's it's, about to hit us. Oh my goodness. So I, I got a kiddie pool and I just said, we're going to fill this up with cold water to see what happens guys. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> we have a inflatable pool here too, for, for the grandkids. And we hadn't mentioned that yet, but it'll be a bath by the time it's the, the sun does. It'll be just like a bathtub. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> let's come back. Let's let's circle this to coffee and let's let's ask you this question. So you were down in Phoenix. Yes. And you're a coffee guy. So you're drinking coffee while you're in Phoenix. Do you still drink in hot coffee in the desert or did you switch over to iced coffee? I love hot co- I love coffee as it was intended, brewed hot, fresh, delicious. Okay. I'm sitting out by the pool. I'm having a, a cup of fresh brewed coffee. And it's about probably, I'd say 89 degrees, you know, uh, plus I'm an early riser. So my day would typically start uh, while my kids and my wife would sleep in. I'd, I'd honestly hit the golf course at about 6.05, 6.10 yeah, for my tea time. Yeah. And it's it's like, it feels like it's 10 a.m. in the right. Pacific Northwest. And so um, that's what I loved about the desert was just how it, the days seemed to last forever, man. But yeah, I drink mm-hmm. hot coffee and and never looked back. I'd get an ice, you know, white mocha later on in the afternoon for a little j- kind of dessert thing. But uh, yeah. So what? So coffee for you? I, you know, I always ask this question, and I, you know, I, you know, where, where's, where's a coffee shop that you like to hang out at? So you, you know, we know you're going to say Anthem. So for you, is it, is it an americano? Is it drip coffee? What's your go-to coffee beverage? Scott, I got to tell you, man, two, two things, and I want to say this, I. Uh, of course, I love Anthem and I love going to our spots, but I love exploring and celebrating, you know, other people's uh, sure. independent, independent coffee shops. And so I, I seek those out. And usually when I do, I think um, my drink of choice is and how I, I don't, I don't judge other people's, but I, what I like to kind of compare uh, mm-hmm. coffee wise is a double espresso with a tablespoon of honey. Oh, okay. Nobody has said that combination yet. Double espresso it's, with a tablespoon of honey. I like that. Yeah. It, it, and a lot of times, you know, the baristas will serve it with kind of sparkling water to cleanse the palate. And they serve right. it with the other little adobio, right? Is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Double espresso. Um, but man, the honey with the espresso is one of the greatest 
combination. It's three sips and I'm out. And then my heart's beaten and we're back alive again for the day. Um, it's, but I love just that. Put those paddles on your chest. <laughs> That's right. And here we are. Um, but yeah, I, I love that. And it, it's really fun to taste coffee in a, in that concentrated pure form like that um, with just enough sweetness to help, uh, help it slide down like medicine. <laughs> That's awesome. No, see, so, so many people, I'm a, I'm a black coffee drinker. I, and I'm, I'm anti anything pumpkin spice. I just, you know, that's just, I will never <laughs> consume anything with pumpkin spice anyway. Um, okay. But I like the dopio with a, with a tablespoon of honey idea. Man. I really, I, I gotta, I'm going to check that out. I'm good. Scott, I'm gonna I think check, you got to pick your favorite out. shop. Got to do dive into it. And then you got to text me yeah. and let me know your thoughts on that. I, I will. Hear. I will. Because that's a, that's a, that's a, Yeah. Like I said, I like it's not that. a huge cup of coffee. No, it's just it's three sips. It's you're, there, you're, you're there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, done. Boom. Efficient. I mean, there's plenty of time. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I love sitting in a coffee shop having a great conversation. I would be sitting with you right now, and we'd be sipping coffee. But if I, I'm also not opposed to three shots and I'm out. You know, so it's it's both. I like to have the flexibility in the option. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever just because it's, you know if somebody listens to this in November, they're like, why are they talking about the heat? It's snowing outside. But right now we're, we're expected to have maybe record breaking heat. Do you guys start selling a lot of iced coffee? Is that what people are ordering? Are people ordering iced everything? Iced everything, blended everything, free air conditioning when they come in the stores, you know I mean? Like whatever it takes, takes. people are getting ice waters and just dumping them on their heads. What, you know, anything to beat the heat. Um, Yeah. But there's still, there's, it's funny. I think we just said something on our, our Instagram or our Facebook about, you know, are you part of the cold drink camp? Are you a hot, hot coffee drinker for life kind of deal? And so there was kind of people were putting in their votes for that, but, uh, that's yeah, a great I, question. I, it is. Yeah, great, <laughs> I have to go back and see the question. results. Yeah. we got a great media team that, that handles all that stuff for us. So, um, yeah. Okay. It's always fun. So you're vacationing Leavenworth and all of that. You just got back from the desert. Um, you're a golfer because you disclose yes. that and the hat that you're wearing right now says birdie. And I don't think it's cause you're a bird bird watcher, not a bird it's... watcher. I'm just someone who's always hunting for that birdie on the golf course. Yep. It's so tough. your favorite place to play in Washington that you've played that you've yeah. played. I, I have three. Okay. And one is uh, the home course in DuPont. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other why? is Drew. I'm going to ask you to tell yeah, me yeah, why yeah. on each one. So why, why the home course? What is, what about it works for you? You know, I, I it feels, um, to me, the, the home course, I, I think I love the most because of the terrain, there's just so much up and down, so many different looks and angles. Uh, and, and it's, it's just super challenging to me. It's you do have a couple of great views of the water too at a couple holes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, Chambers Bay is just another planet. Chambers Bay Golf Course, that's a whole nother world. And I've played that before, but uh, you know, the home course feels like it challenges me the most. Where I mean, okay. I can't even compete if I go on the <laughs> Chambers Bay one. But how, what a gorgeous course that is! Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one I would say is Druid's Glen and that's in Covington. And I feel like that's a hidden gem. A lot of people haven't discovered that one. Uh, that track, I, again, I would say kind of a medium challenge home okay. course, higher challenge, um, Covington, uh, the, the Druid's Glen one medium. And then the third one is, is high Cedars, which is just here in, in Ording high Cedars. <laughs> I love really? high cedars. I I'm not laughing it. at you. I just, I've golfed that one. Okay. Yeah. And I just, okay. there's something very homey about it. Um, okay. My wife loves to join me and drive the golf cart while okay. I play golf. And we've mm-hmm. even gotten together with three other couples now. And what about once a week, all eight of us go out that the ladies drive the cart. They, and they don't, they don't have any desire to play golf. They just want to enjoy kid free activity with other adults and like we just have the time of our lives together man so we feel like we've hacked life uh you know at this stage in the game where we can have these meaningful moments with other couples yeah it's pretty fun so all right so you named your top three do you have a course or two that you haven't played yet that you want to try 
I do. Uh, it came up yesterday. Newcastle. Okay. I want to golf Newcastle. I, I hear the views of Seattle are just unbelievable and it's very challenging. And, you know, one, one other course is Salish Cliffs, I believe. And I remember okay. playing that years ago, but I, my golf game was horrible. I probably lost 30 balls there. So it's like, <laughs> I'm ready to go. To, I'm, I'm ready. I've taken the game seriously in the last year, Scott, I got to tell you, I had to have a hobby. So, um, you know, I feel like I'm ready to take on that challenge again. And I hit the ball a little straighter. Uh, okay. And a little better than I used to. And so I'm excited to, to give those guys a shot. Yeah. All right. Those are, those are awesome things. How about, how about, so there's one more it's Suncadia. Okay. I'm, I haven't golfed any of the courses in Suncadia. I'm coming after Suncadia next. Okay. There's like three courses there and I'm excited to get out that way. So yeah, there's, there's one other course over in central Washington and, and I, it, for the life of me, I cannot think of it. It's in Brewster. Um, I have to look it up. I have to look it up because I think Campbell Sands. Oh, yes. I, my friends talk about that. That's the Holy Grail, apparently. That is, that's kind of what I've heard too, is that it's, it's from what I've seen in photographs of it, it's, it's jaw dropping. I mean, yeah. if, but Right now is not the time to golf camels. <laughs> no, 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 no. You'll, you'll, you'll melt. Know. You'll literally melt. Yeah. You'll just, and your I, skin will peel off. I got to tell you, you know, golf for me has become something that, um, you know, lot, any, any business owners or any, any, any parents, any person really that's listening to this podcast. Um, it, it's important that we take care of ourselves and we find something that refreshes us. Right. Mm -hmm. And nothing recharges me like these moments, um, you know, four hours on a golf course, just kind of letting everything. It's a cathartic activity. You're walking. Sometimes you're, you're picking clubs. You're it's just, I'm, I'm thankful to have discovered golf and to have it hit during this time of my life where it really helps me to manage stress and just enjoy some new areas too. I'm, I'm loving it. So cool. your kids, what do your kids like to do? Cause they're at that age where they're learning. Cause you were, you were really into baseball when you were a kid. Sure was. Yeah. yeah. My oldest, you know, was into soccer, um, leading up to leading up to COVID then, then that kind of waned and he actually picked up skateboarding and has become an incredible skateboarder. So like, okay. it's just so fun. He's, he's taller than me. I've okay. been this tall since the fifth grade. I've kind of been stuck. So, uh, <laughs> but he shot up above me and, uh, he's doing a great job with that. And my other two, they love scooting, you know, the little scooters and they'll hit the yeah. skate park as well. Uh, and my youngest just started playing soccer. Um, okay. My middle son tried football this summer as well and enjoyed that. So, you know, uh, they're just, they're athletic. We're sporty. They got tons of friends around here in the community we live. And so, you okay. know, we're, we're blessed, man. It's, it's awesome. so fun. Well, let's, let's first off, is there something I haven't asked you that you want to, that I should have asked you? Is there some glaring question that we overlooked in this, this conversation? Scott, I think we touched on some really cool stuff, man. The history of okay. Anthem, the inspiration of Anthem, why growth, where we're going in the future. No, I, I okay. think you crushed it. Yeah. So if people want to find out more about Anthem, locations, all of that, where's a great place? Where can we send them to find out more about you and Anthem? Yeah, myanthemcoffee.com. It's, okay. uh, it's easy. All the, all the goods are right there. And, of course, we're you know on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, at Anthem Coffee, I think is our handle. And, um, you know, we, we try to continue to, uh, what's, what's fun is a lot of our innovation. That's one of our values. It's been on hold for the moment again, but we're finally starting to dream again about what kind of fun, innovative products we can bring to the table. And, uh, you know, just recently we had, we had, uh, soft launched, I would say we haven't officially launched the, uh, the coffee flight. <laughs> um, but oh, we, yes, we did you know, look that because that's Garrett. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, stop. Yeah, let's no, no, talk coffee flight. We, we got to talk that. So let's first off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank Yeah. There was, yeah, that, I knew right. something was going to come. Oh man. man. So <laughs> what was the motive? Let's walk through this, the coffee flight idea for, that you guys yes. had. What was the motivation and then how have you executed? Yeah. So 
man, I was getting, again, text message after text message from people. Uh, you know, they would send me screenshots of something they saw on Pinterest or uh, as they were scrolling the endless feed. And they're going, Brian, <laughs> when can when can we get these uh, coffee flights at Anthem? And I'm I'm going, guys, if you had any idea the kind of stuff that we're working on internally, I don't have margin to even think about coffee flights right now. We're trying to hire. I'm having to cover a shift today. You know, it was like... <laughs> You know, I'm so, talking to this Scott guy on a podcast. You don't understand. Ah, it's, life is crazy. Um, but you know, all these requests just kind of, I said, okay, fine. I'm going to, I'm, let me look into this coffee flight thing. Let me see what all the rage is, what everybody's talking about. And I just thought, you know, okay, I, I could see this working. And, um, you know, as true to our mission, we want to create unique experiences for people. And sometimes people get into the same rut of ordering the same thing for years at a time. And so uh, I, I just thought this could be the right time to roll something like this out where people are beginning to get out and about again, meeting up with friends. Why not try a coffee flight where you can pick four different coffee beverages and try them uh, in, in a, s- a smaller sampler version um, versus going all in on a, you know, four or five, $6 beverage. And, and, mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like it. They get to try four things. They get to have a conversation and interact with their friends over it. And so, so, like I said, Scott, we've soft launched it. Um, if people that are following our our, our social media uh, pay attention, once we get our whole team trained up and all the resources of how we'll roll it out um, dispersed, we'll be making some big announcements there. And, and it just we feel like it's going to be a fun experience this summer. Everything from energy drinks to uh, coffee beverages to teas, things that are shaken, things that are stirred. I mean, yeah, sky's oh, so the limit. So it's not just going to be a coffee flight. It, it could be a, a beverage flight. There you go. Yeah. Well coffee, said. Fl- coffee flight sounds better to me, but you know, it does. But, but yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. But you, if, yep. so some, well, so let's ask this. So if somebody's a tea, tea fan, can they try four different teas, tea beverages? hundred percent. Yeah. Basically what we're going to have wow, is, cool. is a customer that wants to explore this. We're mm-hmm. going to have them work with that barista uh, to discover, okay, well, what four things would you like to try? Okay. Well, let's try a berry blast tea with, um, you know, raspberry added to it. Let's try a uh, maybe a, a, an iced mint tea with honey that's shaken. Maybe we even do a tea that has sparkling water instead of flat water, you know, uh, just to oh. get some effervescence. So I, I want that to be something where we give liberty to our baristas to mm-hmm. experiment, to try to hit the the unique taste buds and cravings of our consumers. And where we just we discover together some fun new things for them to to enjoy. That's cool. I'm I'm. I'm glad we, we touched on that. I think that's a really, I th- didn't know, you know, I thought coffee flight, I just thought coffee, but if the fact that it's going to be just a flight of experimentation, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's really neat. I like that. So, so we can find you at my anthem coffee.com. Yes, sir. Facebook, Instagram, all the social channels. You've got eight locations in the Pierce County area. Come and check them out. And you'll find Brian on a golf course soon. Um, leave him alone because it's cathartic. I kid. Um, you know, <laughs> that's right. You know, go have fun. Thank you so much for being here. I I enjoyed it. I I I love what you guys are doing. I'm I'm really you know hope that well I'm not hope isn't the right word but continued success. Thank you, Scott. And um, thanks for being here. Man, a huge pleasure. Love what you're doing, how you're bringing a ton of attention to, to really cool spots throughout Washington, man. So thank you Thanks. for taking Appreciate this moment. It. Yeah, this is really All great. Right. Join us next time for another episode of the Exploring Washington State podcast.